Hey guys, hope you guys had a good week of trading here and finished out the week uh, on a strong note. This was a tough week to trade. Uh, the biggest reason, honestly, that this week was tough is we started the week off knowing that we had j on Tuesday and the market knew that. So Monday we had this super tiny uh, $3 day where we just didn't do a whole lot of anything. Then Tuesday we had that massive move and then we just kind of had some just choppiness on Wednesday. Today was kind of the same thing, choppy ranginess. But the really the biggest issue with this week trading wise is that next Tuesday is CPI. Um, and premiums are already extremely high because of that. And it just makes it super tough to really just get any reward for the risk. Um, like this week, even in the beginning of the week especially, we, we, we just needed almost double the general move. Uh, like I target five to 10%. And just to get that 5% almost all week long, what I would usually get 10 to 15% on probably, I needed, a, I only barely got three to 5% on. So just a very tough week to trade. It's always tough to trade these high IV, high premium weeks, but let's take a look at where we're at here. So I mentioned on pretty much Tuesday when we broke this bull channel here that I really expected a pullback. And I pretty much have been mentioning since FOMOC last week that I just wanted a pullback to retest some actual supports um, to just make this, this rally a little bit more believable. And we finally got this. So for me here, this is actually a very bullish close to the week. So we came down here and we tested this 405.3 level. And I've talked about this numerous times, back, especially back here when we were trying to poke through it. Um, this is just a huge area. And the fact that we were able to hold this support and hold the daily 20 EMA and then close or op sorry close over yesterday's close is actually very bullish. Yes, we did not take the, retake the daily 8 EMA, but I do suspect on Monday we will do that. We are in this slight bear new bear channel here. Uh, we will watch this closely, and if Monday we can break through 410.6, that will put us back actually in a new bull channel. Um, and I wouldn't mind, honestly, down here would be a decent place to play some calls to the 420 range, but the biggest thing we have to keep in mind is the fact that CPI is on Tuesday. Now, CPI, for those that have not seen it, I'll just talk about it real quick here. Um, consensus for year-over-year -year CPI came in at, is coming in at 6.2%, which is lower than the previous. So that probably is going to be coming lower than expected. Now, this is the big one. Month-over-month -month CPI is projected at 0.5%. That's a huge increase from negative 0.1% we got, and they did actually revise that to 0.1% now. So this will be very, very interesting to see where we actually um, actually end up on month over month. I expect month over month to come in pretty hot and over uh, either at forecast or definitely over previous, and I really do think we're going to get a negative reaction from markets on that. Core currently is projected at 5.7%, which is unchanged. Um, so this would be the first month since October that we either get no change or an increase on year over year core. And then month over month core is um, expected to come in at 0.4%. Now note they did revise up month over month C core CPI from last one, so 2.4%. So this would be no change. But if you look at the general trend on core, it actually is rising. Um, and it has been rising, re-rising re since December's. So if we get another 0.4 or higher on core month over month, I think that's gonna be received pretty negatively in the markets. So we'll be interested to see what happens with that. Um, Taking a look over here at the weekly. So I've talked about this seven week post collar here and how that is generally the top. And that is something that I am definitely still watching for for next week. I do think we could put our top in and then actually see a retrace into week 11, which would be the 13th, which is right around next FOMOC and next CPI. 
Um, <clears throat> so basically what happened here is we actually did break through the weekly bull channel support here. So in general, that is bearish. And we did lose this 408.8, which is this red channels boundary. So in general, this weekly is slightly bearish. And this does give me a feeling that we are going to see some downside next week and really the coming weeks back to like 390 to 398 area. Um, it will be very interesting to see how markets react to CPI. I have a feeling if we happen to get an upside surprise, um, it's going to be a very similar December uh, reaction to CPI where we might put the top in, or it might even be like a November CPI where we have this big print and then we just kind of consolidate and then see some downside. So I'm definitely, kind of, I'm definitely expecting some downside over the next month or so. Uh, definitely be interesting to see where we go, go where, where CPI puts us. It's hard to give any good concrete predictions right now, just because it all depends on CPI. I mean, we could open 3% on CPI, and that puts us way up in this range, and we got to start thinking about different resistances. Versus if we open down 3%, then we're now we're talking about playing calls again. So we just got to weigh the odds here. Um, Looking over at futures here, futures is very, very bullish. This is a very bullish bounce here. So I mentioned this 40-40 support area was a very big, interesting area that we were going to watch if we did come down. Uh, we didn't quite make it there. We had a huge daily 20 EMA bounce. And even more important than that, though, is that we retook 40.95 and we closed the weekly out over 40.95. That is very bullish going into next week. So that means we had a major break of support, and the very next day we recovered it. And this Doji reversal candle, this basically morning Doji star pattern here, is an upside reversal pattern. So I will be targeting this 41.34 to 41.45 area for Monday. Um, let's see here. So going over to the weekly. Um, so surprisingly on the weekly, we actually did not lose the eight week, long, eight week long bull channel support. So that is something to note that is a little different than SPY, which I told you that they are different charts sometimes here. Um, so same thing here. We're going to be looking for that upside push, but we just don't have a lot of information. Um, we did hold and close over that very, very important 4095 weekly uh, support line. Now, that is very, um, very bullish to be honest. So this could be an upside push here, and we could see a bigger move up, something kind of like this here. Um, or even a big old wick like that, where we get a huge pop up to like 4280 or something before we see some downside. But same thing here with this being week seven next week, I do expect whatever we do to be more or less the top of the of, of the rally. Um, taking a look at Tesla here. So Tesla, which is actually pretty incredible. Apple ended up did, did end up closing green, it looks like here. But for most of the day, um, we actually had quite a few of these tech stocks go green. Um, and we also had a lot of them just sitting, like you can see now, just barely red, 0 0.9 or 0 0.2, 0 0.6, 0 0.6. But then you had Tesla down 5%. It was down 6% at one point. And you have NVIDIA down 4.8, which was down, I think, 5 or 6% at the same time too. So it's just very interesting after a week of watching the markets go red and most of tech to be very, to be slightly red, or very, very slightly green. And then you have Tesla and NVIDIA running green all week long, big, big green, and all of a sudden today they give it all up while SPY closes a green day. It's just very interesting to watch a change here. So as you can see here, we clearly broke the rising wedge yet again, but now we have to worry about and start thinking about this potential bull channel here. So the fact that we did come down here and touch daily AEMA support and bounce pretty aggressively and then retook this 196.8 support area, I actually feel more bullish on Tesla than I than I did um, when we were up here. This actually is a bullish support bounce, and this could result in a push back up to this 215 area. Now, on the daily, like I'm saying, I'm bullish. However, when we flip over here, and I'm going to move my resistance or my support line to make it a little bit more clear for you guys. When we move over to the weekly, this actually is an extremely bearish pattern. So this is where we got to be careful about do we trade the macro pattern or do we trade the daily pattern? 
So here what we're seeing is this massive um, gravestone doji reversal candle here, which really is, an, again, an evening doji star pattern. With this huge rejection and close like this, this is a downside pattern here. And if you look at the fact that we did finally close over the daily 200 EMA, or sorry, the weekly 200 EMA full candle for the first time since um, the first week of uh, November, we, if you look at the interaction here with the 200 weekly, and I've said this on the daily too, it's always a fight. It very rarely just goes and then just continues to go. It generally goes and then it comes back down. So we could see this come back down and retest some supports in the 178 area before we push higher. It'll be interesting to see what Tesla does next week. Um, I am setting cash this weekend. There's just, I, I really do see a very strong upside call potential for Monday, but with CPI and Tuesday, there's just no way to know for sure how the markets are going to react. So I, I set cash just to not, uh, not take a chance. So looking at the VIX here, uh, which is very impressive, we had an almost 11% two day rally on the VIX. And then we had a massive push to 21.94 this morning. And then it gave all of it up and then some by open. Very, very interesting to see this pattern play out here um, on the VIX today. So this is actually going to, and also a reason why I did um, envision or see some upside calls go uh, or become more of a, a play for Monday here because this huge evening, do or sorry, yeah, evening doji star pattern here, this massive gravestone doji here is a reversal pattern. And I've said it time and time again, and this happened right here too and right here and happen down here and down here whenever we have and right here whenever we have these huge rejections on the vix and it matches which on futures matches the daily candle on spy and as in they're inverse of each other which means they agree that they're going to do opposites which is what we want to see it's a very high probability play so i would be very surprised not to see a green monday but again, with CPI happening on Tuesday, there's no telling what's going to happen and what's going to do what. So it was better to sit this one out. Taking a look at Bitcoin here, though, we are seeing the eight cross below the 20 EMA on the daily here. Um, and we are still losing some steam, but now we're getting back into a daily 200 EMA retest here. Um, down here in this 21.2 area is key support to watch this weekend. So Bitcoin is showing some weakness and is showing that a lot of this rally is over. So we will look to see Bitcoin and go into another consolidation pattern. Um, but overall, Bitcoin does show weakness, which should show a general market sell-off is potential. I right, hope you guys had a good week trading this week. CPI next week. I'll have my post up sometime this weekend in the Discord. All right, have a good weekend, guys. Thanks for tuning in for this video. Don't forget to subscribe, follow, and like to stay updated. Uh, drop a comment if you have any questions. This is the permanent Discord link. Um, sometimes that does not work for whatever reason. Just go ahead and drop a comment, send me a message, um, and I will get you an updated link so you can get to the Discord. Some of the advantages of the Discord is I do a pre-market update with key support and resistance levels every day. Um, and also throughout the day, I do live uh, intraday commentary on SPY and the general market. Um, and I also do live intraday buy and sell alerts. You can follow me on YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, or TikTok as Spy Optionaire and on Reddit as Daddy Dersh.